This week I have a very, very simple and basic wet fly to tie up. This is called the Gray Hackle and Peacock. And this fly was chosen because I've, I have a wet fly tying class coming up uh, on the 5th of October. I'm going to tie up three different patterns. And wet flies are an awful lot of fun to tie. They can be kind of challenging. But what I wanted to focus on this in this class wasn't so much the different flies um, that we're going to tie up, say a matched wing or married wing fly, as the techniques for tying a wet fly. Most of your wet flies have very similar components. They've got a tag, or some call it a tip in the back, the body material and a rib, either uh, some sort of a false hackle, uh, hackle palmered, or a wing. Um, but they're all tied in in very, very similar manners. In other words, how you tie and uh, attach the mylar for the tag and you tie that in is going to be the same on all of these different wet flies for the most part. So my focus for this class is more is how wet flies are actually put together and the skills that you need. I should say the um, the uh, the tying techniques to practice in each one of these so that even though this gray hackle peacock is a very basic, simple wet fly. Uh, it will develop the foundation for skills for tying uh, something like a parmesan bell or something like that. So anyway, that's the gray hackle peacock and we'll go ahead and get started tying. Start the gray hackle peacock by placing our hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 3399 hook. It's a standard sprout hook that's used for most wet flies. This is a size 6. After we debarb it, I'm going to attach my thread. I'm using just a black Danville 6 aught thread for this. Because of the body on this is peacock, you don't have to worry about a light colored floss or body. I can just go ahead and tie the entire fly with the black thread. I'm going to advance the thread down to just the, at the point of the hook. Right there. Cut my tag off. And now I'm going to tie in the tag for this fly. The tag is a silver mylar, excuse me, a gold mylar tinsel. This is actually a silver and gold Mylar tinsel, this is a size 16 and 18 by Danville. Uh, it's silver on one side and gold on the other. I'm going to attach this on the opposite side of the hook by bringing the mylar up with the silver side out. I'm going to set it on the opposite side of the hook. Putting some tension on my thread, I'll just slide that down to where there's just a small tag out there. Then I'm going to advance my thread down the hook shank 12 wraps. By stopping and tying in right at the hook point and then advancing 12 wraps down, my thread is hanging right at the very base of the barb. And that's where traditionally all your tags are going to start on your wet flies. Now I'm going to put five wraps of mylar down the hook shank and back up to create the tag and then tie that off. The easiest way to do this is to actually flip the hook over so now I don't have to navigate around the, uh, the bobbin and the thread hanging. I can just simply start wrapping my tag in. You'll notice it flips over to the gold side. That's why I tied it in with the silver side out. I get five wraps down, five wraps back up, and I will tie that in so that it is on the underside. And this is just traditionally how these are, are tied in. And the reason is if I have a tail up here and I have the tag coming down off the top of the hook shank, that little tag there can present a bump that might interfere with the tail. Now this fly does not have a tail, but as I mentioned, there are some basic skills in tying wet flies that you pretty much do with all of the different wet flies that you tie. So it kind of becomes habit to do it this way. Once I have the rest of that 
mylar cut off. I'm going to flip it back over and I'm going to reattach the mylar tinsel, the same tinsel with the silver side out and this is going to be for my rib. As I mentioned this fly only has three different materials in it, uh, four if you count the hook. When you find that this happens because it is a, a mylar synthetic material sometimes you'll get this uh, little curve in it like that. You can get that out by just rubbing your scissors on the opposite side like this. And so then now it goes the other way and it's not in your way anymore. The body on this is made from peacock hurl. Um, traditionally you're going to use four peacock hurls on this fly but as mine have kind of been picked through a little bit and they are a little shorter and some are a little skinnier I'm actually going to use about six of them here to be able to complete the body on this. I've already prepped these by um, uh, bringing all the tips up even and then cutting the butt ends off right here and it's the butt ends that I'm going to tie in here. Now on a lot of your wet flies when you tie in the body material you're going to make certain that the ends of any butt ends will, will go all the way to the end of the body. And that's because especially if you're using like a floss you don't want any bumps or gaps in the underbody uh, to transfer or translate through the actual body material. But this peacock curl basically will cover this up and any little bump that you see from where I've lashed all of the hurls in up here will not translate up into it. Now I'm going to end my thread right up here almost into the headspace a little bit. We don't have a wing on this fly um, or a uh, false hackle or anything so I can actually kind of bring this forward into the headspace a little bit. We can crowd the head a little bit on this. Once I have the hurls tied in I'm going to go ahead and start to wrap those. Now any multi-strand material like this you want to get all of those fibers under the same tension and you do that by stroking all those fibers in, the dire in a direction perpendicular to the hook so that way when you're wrapping them on they won't separate on you. And then once you have them all under the same tension you can easily just start wrapping all of those in to create the body of the fly. Once those are secured in, I'll cut away the excess. And there is the body of our fly. Now I'll apply the rib. On all your wet flies, you want to, your rib is going to be five evenly spaced wraps. So I'll start the rib to my third wrap is going to be right about the middle of the hook shank. My sixth wrap will come right up to where I'm going to tie it off on the side of the hook shank. And again, I'm tying that off on the side of the hook shank so that if I had a wing, say this was an oval tinsel, and I tied it up on top and secured it on top of the hook shank, it might get in the way of the wing that was put in. So once again, it's just kind of a habit that you get into uh, doing things a certain way so that on any of the different wet flies that you might be tying you won't run into any issues. So with the body and the rib secured I'm now going to tie in the hackle for our gray hackle and peacock. I'm simply using a grizzly hen hackle. This is a whiting um, hen cape. <clears throat> the feather that I'm going to use is very very um, webby um, lots of action to this feather. What I'm looking for are the fibers that are generally right about in the middle of the hackle. I don't want to get these with uh, 
ragged ends on them and uh, the fluff isn't what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this just right in the center. And then I'm going to tie in just the tip end of this right in the headspace. I'm not really going to worry that I didn't peel off some fibers because again, the hackle on this is going to be uh, sticking out all over the place for the most part and have a lot of action and uh, to it and everything. So I'm going to take my hackle pliers, grab the tip of the hackle, and I'm going to stroke these fibers back. And this way when I wrap this in, I don't trap any fibers pointing forward. I'm going to start wrapping that back. Each wrap right in front of the other. I left my thread right where um, I was tying this in because the thread kind of helps as you're wrapping that around to push some pe uh, pressure on the stem of the hackle so that each wrap goes right in front of the other one. Now you'll notice I am kind of crowding the head a little bit on this last wrap, but as I said, that's okay because when I tie this off, I can stroke those fibers back and in making the head, I can lash all those fibers into a, a rearward direction. I cut the stem off. I do want to make certain I'm nice and close because I'm so close to the uh, eye of the hook here, I don't want uh, a small nub of the stem sticking out uh, in the resulting head. Stroke all these fibers back and just generally get the head started to lash those fibers down and then I'll go up to the eye of the hook and start working my way backwards covering all that up to make the head of the fly. Now one technique you can use to keep the heads of these flies getting uh, from getting too big is to get the head of the fly done maybe about 70 or 80 percent of the head having it done and then use your whip finish to basically put the finishing touch on the head of the fly. So I'm going to flatten out my thread by spinning the bobbin counterclockwise. This will help me when I go to make the head of the fly. The thread will be flatter and it'll just fill in those ridges on the thread and it'll much, be much smoother and it'll just make certain everything's covered up really nice. My whip finish tool, I'll put in a about an eight turn whip finish. My thread got away from me there. There we go. Starting at the back of the head, I'm just going to put in about an eight turn whip finish. You can see how flat the thread is. Just fills everything in real nice. Makes that head nice and smooth. Just kind of covers everything up and makes it look all nice and finished. Cut my thread off and then I'm going to use a little fly tight to soak into the, th the head there. and secure the head of the fly. In a moment, when that dries, I'll go ahead and start the process with uh, three coats of hardest hull on that to give that a nice, shiny, lacquered look. So our initial coat of fly tight has all dried. <clears throat> the head is all nice and secured. Now I'll start the process using some hardest hull to give this uh, the head of the fly a nice glossy coat. You can certainly use a black lacquer if you want on this, but I just prefer to use the hardest hull. 
and I'm just going to put a nice layer of the hardest hull all over the head of the fly. It will look like it has a nice glossy finish when that each layer is put on here, but when it dries, it will shrink down onto those thread wraps, and the first two layers, sometimes three, depending on if it's a large, say like a classic um, freshwater streamer or something like that, uh, those first few layers, the threads will still uh, translate through it, so you'll see them. So generally a third or a fourth uh, coat of hardest hull is what's needed to get it really, really nice and smooth. And that is the gray hackle and peacock. As I mentioned, it's a very, very basic wet fly, um, and it was chosen primarily because of that fact. There's a lot of simple uh, techniques to tying in different materials. A lot of your wet flies have tags, ribs, the body material. So there's a lot of skills in tying this wet fly that uh, you'll use the same procedure, same skill in many, many different wet flies. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and not only learned a new pattern, but maybe learned some new techniques and a few new skills. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button below. You can support Dressed Irons by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified when new videos are published. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, remember, it's fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong.